questions. Hi, I'm Andy Parr, and you're watching The Gadget Guru. With me is Jeff Jubin. He's the Dealer Development Manager for Blue Ox. You know, that's the company that makes the tow bars that connect our motorhomes to our tow vehicles. And you guessed it. Today, we're talking tow bars. And that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. Well, I won't speak for you. All I can tell you is that when I purchased my first motor home and I knew I was going to be towing a vehicle, I just went to my dealer and said, what tow bar do you recommend? Well, by pure coincidence, they said, we carry Blue Ox. They installed it, had the base plate connected to my car, have an air brake system on there. And I have to tell you, after about 10,000 miles, I've had no issues. But the thing is, there's a lot, a number of different tow bars and not it's not like a one size fits all type of scenario. So, so that we can make sure that you're getting the right tow bar. I asked Jeff of Blue Ox if, if he could come in and let's talk first, and we're gonna hit a variety of topics today about tow bars. Let's talk first about how do you know which tow bar is right for your towing application? Well, a few things that you're gonna to need to know is, is the type of vehicle that you're gonna to tow. Not only that, but the weight of the vehicle as well, because the tow bars are really based on a weight rating on the type of vehicle that you're going to pull in its weight. Uh, normally what I recommend is, is if the customer is going to try and pull a pickup truck, even though that pickup truck may be under, say, 6,500 pounds, they always have an open bed in that pickup truck. So usually what they'll do is they'll start to load it up. So in that case, go with a heavier duty tow bar. You can always pull with a, with a heavier duty tow bar on a lighter vehicle. Um, but in most cases, if you have a, a, a lighter duty tow bar, you're subjected to whatever the weight capacity is of that tow bar. Okay, for motorhome applications, mm -hmm. how many different tow bars does Blue Ox have in their lineup? Well, we have three that are extremely popular on the, that are motorhome mounts. Um, we have our brand new Ascent tow bar, which is a 7,500 pound all aluminum construction tow bar. It only weighs 31 pounds. Um, after that, we have our Avail tow bar, which is probably one of our most popular. It's a 10,000 pound tow bar. It also features the same non-binding latches. It's two inches longer, just like the Ascent. Uh, the reason why we do that is, is so when you go in and out of turns, you'll notice that you'll be able to make a sharper turn uh, without having to worry about the uh, corners of the vehicles touching. Okay, which tow bar do I have on my vehicle? Uh, right now, what, you're, what you have is the Alpha tow bar. Okay, yeah. I'm, I see a lot of those around. What are the pros and cons of that model? It's not a brand new tow bar. I've mm -hmm. just said I've had it for a year and a half or so. Okay, well, basically that was uh, one of our most popular tow bars at one time. Um, that one right there, though, uh, still has the old style latches or locks on it that would uh, eventually bind if you put a lot of pressure on it. Let's or just explain what binding is. You have latches that are on, and again, I'm just going to use words that I use on your tow arms. Correct. And what binding is, if you get a certain angle, when you go to release those so that you can disconnect it from your car, they kind of lock. I mean, you, Correct. I know you can stomp on them, whatever, and they're stuck there. And I'm to understand that the main reason the binding occurs is when you're on a hill up or down or on a tight turn. When you get in that situation, what do you do to get out of it? The first thing I would try recommending to do is starting up the tow vehicle and just moving the steering wheel back and forth. Usually by doing this one to two times, you're releasing the bind that's on the tow bar. And the bind is actually a forward amount of pressure that's being applied to the tow bar, and it makes it difficult to trip the latches. Okay, now you mentioned, you know, this one's been around for a while. Now there's a step up to this one Correct. that you said is longer arms and it, it reduces binding? Well, it doesn't reduce the bind. What we have is a patented non-binding latch. So no matter how much pressure you put against the tow bar, you can always trip the locks. Okay, and what's the name of that one? Uh, this one's going to be the Ascent tow bar. Okay, that's the one you brought with you. Yes, sir. Okay, I tell you what, let me go get it. Okay, here it is. This is the Ascent. Now, at first glance, comparing this to my model, it appears th th the tubes are larger. Everything here looks beefier. The latches are now curved and set of straight. Tell me what the difference is and in, in, in who should buy this tow bar. Well, so just by looking at the tow bar, what you'll notice is, is yes, the tubes are a little bit larger in diameter, but the construction of this tow bar is different from the one that you have. This is an all aluminum, aircraft aluminum graded tow bar. Um, 
the reason why we did that was it was basically for our customer mm -hmm. that wanted to have a lighter duty tow bar. As you can basically tell, we shaved quite a bit of weight off of this one versus our, our previous you models. You said this one's 31 pounds? This one's 31 pounds. And how much does that one? Uh, that one's going to be about 42. Okay. Okay. And now the non-binding, you said it's just it's a, a more improved mechanism. It's a it's a patented non-binding latch. If you notice on the previous model, you have a raised area or a raised box, mm -hmm. and that is where the lock is actually mounted on the tow bar. And this one, it's it's a latch mechanism that we that we built into the tow bar. So if you get in a situation where you're parked on, on a, a downslope or, or uphill on a corner. It should be no problem releasing it? Correct. Okay, fingers, I can feel it's more spring-loaded oh yeah. here. Just. Two fingers, you can trip that latch every single time. Okay. So if somebody wants to upgrade from the Alpha to this, is it as simple as just pulling it out putting it back in? So it's that simple. Okay. I tell you what we're going to do next. We're going to go on and move over to the tow bar. There's a lot of videos online. I don't know if you've seen of, a, of users showing how to hook up you know, or how to connect your, your car to a Blue Ox tow bar. And I got to tell you, I've seen so many mistakes in them. Instead of me being critical then, why don't you and I do it and you show me the correct way to connect your car, the safe way, to a Blue, Blue Ox tow bar. You ready for that? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go on and move over to the tow bar. Is there more than one correct way? to attach a tow bar to a vehicle? No, and typically what you want to do is put your tabs in first, which is the items that you see right here. Okay, let's go in and put them in. Okay. And any tricks that come along the way while you're doing it is good. Now, what you want to do is put a little bit of forward pressure on it. Once you do it, it pushes a spring-loaded pin back, rotate it, and then lock into place. Okay, just going to grab the other one. We're going to do this in pretty much real time. Okay. And by the way, speaking of real time, I'm going to put a link to another video where me and my friend Sarwin did the whole thing under in five minutes. There's a link right up here for that. Okay, the tabs are in. What's next? Okay, so now what we want to do is uh, connect our tow bar. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you do this because okay. you were telling me a trick earlier. What you want to do is separate the arms, and the reason why you do that is it allows you to put a little bit of forward pressure on this particular tow bar, and then you can also put side pressure on it to, okay, to pull it down. bring the tow bar down. Yeah, we were talking before. I never was able to get mine all the way down. The reason is I had the arms together when I was doing You said to have it separated first when you're, when you're putting them in here. Okay, here, I'll go ahead and hold this for you while you... Okay. Now, usually what I recommend is having both tow bar legs together and then connecting up one side first, and I'll show you why. And of course, you use the up on the other side to get Correct. the, I guess, the, the knuckles, or what's the proper term for that? This is called our triple lug, or okay. it's actually an offset triple lug. The reason why we do this is, is we offset where the tow bar is attached to our triple lug. It actually acts like an alignment for our base plate and tow bar. Okay. Now, the reason why I suggest bringing both arms over to one side and connecting up one leg first is, as you can see now, I don't even have my hand on the tow bar. I'm not fighting the tow bar from side to side. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I know. I, I have been doing that way. I would keep them separated in your kind of juggling, or if you have, it, it will require two people sometimes. You know, exactly. I'm not a big guy. Okay, let's go on and do the other okay. side. I guess this is shampoo, rinse, and repeat. Okay. Now this is probably, I don't say this is the most important, one of the top two important things on here, the hooks. I have a couple questions. Again, a lot of videos on YouTube on this. I see people, they wrap them around. I read right on here clearly, it says something about, do not put this on here. These are your locks here, correct? Exactly. And I don't know why people are doing those. Now granted, the ones that came with mine are coiled like this. I see a lot of people with just flat ones. Uh, why, do, why do some people have the coiled and flat ones? Don't they all come with the same? Or? No, different manufacturers utilize different type of cables. Uh, usually you'll find the people with the flat or the straight cables. Uh, the tow bar actually has a channel that's inside of it that they have to route the cable through. Okay, now when we do these, and I know this can be hard to see, but on the Jeep, on my uh, my uh, uh, my car mount here, it's vertical. On 
the bus here. Mm -hmm. It's horizontal. What is the correct orientation on both sides of putting on the hook so that they don't fall off? Great, I do have the rubber stoppers correct. on there. So on the vertical sides, we recommend that you do both sides in the same fashion. So if you're going to hook them where the hooks are facing in, make sure you do it on both sides. Okay. Um, whenever you have the type of hookup that you have on your motorhome, always connect them in a downward fashion mm -hmm. because you never know if something were to happen to the rubber keeper you still have downward force being applied to the to the cable itself. You know, I had somebody tell me the exact opposite. They said, because when it happens and the way it, it pressures are, but to hear it from the factory, I'm, I'm going to believe you. And of course, we crisscross them. Correct. Right? Now, you just went underneath the tow bar. I typically go over the tow bar. What is to, to keep it from dragging. What's the rule here? Now the reason why we crisscross the cables is first of all when you go in and out of turns it keeps the radius the same. Mm -hmm. So in other words you don't have one cable that's shortening up and possibly dragging the ground. But the other reason why we cross the cables is, is just for some reason if there was an accidental mis uh, disconnect with the tow bar, the tow bar is going to land on top of the cables instead of just landing right there on top of the road. Okay so what I was doing it was incorrect. I right. was I was running the cable over the mount. You don't want that. We want it underneath. Okay, we have another cable. We're going to just connect this. Sure. And I have to tell you, I remember the first time that I did this, you know, with my coach. You know, I, I had some friends helping me out. Oops, excuse me. Right and, under. you know, it's a little stressful. Under, you want to go under? Um, oh, that's correct. Yeah, good. Old habits are hard to break. Go under. And, you know, it's a little stressful the first couple times you're doing it. But as you can see in that other video that Sarah and I did, even though we put our cables on top, whole thing start to finish in, in less than five minutes. Oh, now, exactly. Okay, lighting. Now, you're not in the lighting business, but that is part of your, your, your mounting kit that, that you have, that correct? Well, we offer lighting kits for the, R, for the uh, tow vehicles. Okay. And uh, we offer everything from an LED bulb and socket uh, to an incandescent bulb and socket. Uh, we also offer now what we call an easy light wiring harness where basically your, the technician doesn't have to cut the wires uh, going to the light. They don't have to drill holes in the, rever in the lights of your tow vehicle. They just simply unplug the modular plug, put our T connection in place, run all the wires to the front, and, and uh, it cuts down on the installation time okay. a little bit as well. Let's talk about on the road law. You have to have this, is that correct? Yes, you have to have operational lights on okay. the back Okay, and our alternative would be, I know some people, whether it's Bluetooth or just a wired suction cup light, you have to have some sort of lighting that coordinates with your brakes, turn signals, whatever. Yes. Now, here's something. You know, I did another video with another towing product, and we didn't mention braking, and the reason was they didn't sell that product. You know, we were talking mm -hmm. about a lot. This is important. Explain to people what this is. Well, what, what you have here is a, um, a braking system for your uh, tow vehicle. Anytime when you start adding extra weight to an RV, you're going you're gonna to increase the, the distance it's going to take for you to stop. It um, doesn't matter how great of a braking system you have on your, on your tow vehicle or on your motorhome itself, um, it always helps to have an additional braking on the tow vehicle. Now, what products does, again, I don't have a Blue Ox product for my braking. I'm using an Air Force One. You know, why people tell me that's one I, I should get. What, what does Blue Ox sell, or let's say in a setup like this, what would you recommend? Well, with our system, uh, we've, what's been really popular is our Patriot 2 braking system. Uh, it is a portable brake. Um, because not every single person just tows one single vehicle. I mean, I have customers, especially out west, they may pull a Jeep Wrangler today and their, and their Jeep Cherokee tomorrow. Um, so with a portable braking system, you can just easily move it from one vehicle to the next. The only thing you have to have that's permanently mounted is the breakaway switch. So in a case where you're pulling multiple vehicles, what I recommend is, is just buying a secondary breakaway switch. That way you just use one brake and you're using it in multiple vehicles. Okay, and the one you have, uh, we'll, we'll put a picture of it online. That goes on the floorboard of your car and that, that manually presses your brake? Correct. So what it does, it sits in front of the driver's seat has an arm that attaches to the brake pedal, you plug it into the cigarette lighter, and then there's a remote uh, display that gets put on the dash of your RV. Uh, that display will tell you everything that that braking system is doing, and it will also monitor the power of your battery in your tow vehicle. Okay, this is probably the most important cable in the kit. Well, I'd say they're all important. 
I'm going to give you that in. Why don't you tell us what this is? What this is is a breakaway cable. Mm -hmm. So just in case, again, if there was an accidental disconnect, what this cable is designed to do is pull the pin out on your breakaway switch, and when it does that, it starts applying brakes on the tow vehicle. Okay, so basically this is, I don't want to say it's like an airbag. In case of an emergency, this will go up, and, and let's say everything fails. Mm -hmm. Your fail safe here is it will seize the brakes on the car to keep it from going head on into the other lane. It will stop in its tracks behind the vehicle. Exactly. Okay, now this is all connected. Again, I, I just have to point out, the safety cables go underneath. Everything else can go over. The every, just, everything else can go over. Okay. What I usually recommend is if you have a cable like this, you can actually loop one leg or put a bungee cord around it mm -hmm. just to kind of hold everything in, in place. Um, I even have some people that will route their cables under the tow bar but over the safety cables. Okay. So that way your safety cables but are still keeping them I don't have to worry in dips or anything of this dragging or, no. or breaking. No. Okay, so again, this is this my system is a year and a half old. Let's talk about safety. What do you need to look at on your tow bar system to make sure it's operating properly? Well, what you want to do is with our with our tow bar, we recommend that you do service to it every two years or 10,000 miles, whichever comes first. Uh, typically, what we educate our customers to do is is when the tow bar arm is extended, is to pinch the leg here. Okay, let me okay. see what you're feeling. Okay. Now what you want to do is, once you pinch the boot, is try and slide it back and forth. So in your case, what you actually have is, is you feel it's rather sticky. Mm -hmm. um, there's grease underneath of it. So your tow bar is actually due for service. Okay, so when I go like this, let me do it to the camera. When I go like this, I should be able to slide. It's not sliding. Correct. I should to go in. It now. should feel very slippery. Okay, is this something you would recommend doing yourself or taking it to a dealer? I would recommend taking it to a dealer and the reason why is because there's bushings that are inside those those outer legs. Um, you want to measure the tolerance on it. Basically what the tech is going to do is they're going to extend the leg all the way out and check to see how much wobbles inside that leg. Okay, how do, I, in, considering I, I keep my my bus garage kept when not in use. I probably use it a third of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, I while I have the cover, I've never used the cover on here. I figured, you know, it's 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 designed for for outdoor use. Is if I would have used the cover, would would that have extended the the life between maintenance? It might a little bit. Um, you have to remember the main thing is is with our tow bars, we actually put a rubber boot over to try and keep all the dirt and debris out. Um, but eventually, what happens is is the grease will start to break down or it gets pushed further back into the arm assembly. So what the tech has to do is, is they're going to take this boot off. They're going to inspect the inner leg, they're going to inspect the bushing on it, they're going to clean everything off, and then they're going to put more grease back on it and reattach the boot. And repeat to me the intervals that you should have that done. Uh, it's going to be every two years or 10,000 miles, whichever comes first. Now one thing I wanted to bring up too is, you know, with Blue Ox, we have we have team members that go out through, uh, that are throughout the country. Uh, we do over 200 shows and rallies. Um, at those shows and rallies, we actually have a group of guys that will go out and then rebuild the tow bars for a very minimal fee. You know, I saw online that at the Super Show the in Tampa, of course, I live in Florida, that, mm -hmm. that you had people there, but how do you book a reservation for an event? So when, usually what you want to do is go onto our website, which is blueox.com. Uh, we have a listing of all the events that we're going to be at. Even if you don't want to have your tow bar built that very first day, I recommend coming in the first day and making a reservation. Okay. Now, uh, the other question I want to ask you has to do with Jeeps and, and certain tow vehicles. I have a Jeep Wrangler again. I have you know, close, around 10,000 miles of towing in this. I have never had an issue. It's a 2017 Wrangler. Um, but you read about the Cherokees or Grand Cherokees, and right now even the new you know, Grand Cherokees. There's some issues there in Jeep, Fiat, Chrysler. I realize you don't work with them. They've been very slow to respond. We're talking about, and again, a drive wobble, what some people call a death wobble. What can be done on the tow bar end, on the user end, to minimize the chance of that happening? Well, as far as the, there, there's nothing that can be done as far as the tow bar is concerned. That's actually what, what it's, what's occurring is, is in the tow vehicle itself. 
Um, so again, nowadays we're trying to conserve energy, we're trying to get the best fuel rating that we possibly can with our vehicles. Um, usually the tow-in is set as, as close to zero as possible. So that means um, the tires are as straight as can be. As far as the alignment's concerned. So w at one time what we were recommending to the customer was, was going out to an alignment shop, having the alignment checked, explaining to them what was going on that it was occurring whenever they were towing their vehicle. And what we were finding out from the alignment shops was they were just slightly towing it in, so it was still within tolerance of whatever the manufacturer wants, but that was getting rid of that. Um, now with, with the uh, Jeep and, and Dodge products, they're actually recommending that the customer go back, and I guess there is an addition that they put on from There's the manufacturer. There's some kind of wiring harness. It evidently is difficult to get, and again, I think they have it solved for the Cherokee, but you know, just based on the forms, not gospel, just based on the forms, that that they're back ordered or, or whatever, that there's a waiting list. You know, if I've tried, you know, before I purchased this car, another cheap side, look, I've tried calling the Jeep toll-free number, and it's like, they don't know anything about it. I'll give them the, the, this, the, uh, uh, the service notice number, mm -hmm. and they say it doesn't exist. You ask at dealer level, so, you know, I, I was just curious. Uh, you know, again, I like cheap products because they're great to have because they're good to tow, mm -hmm. they're good when, when they're, when they're off-road. Now, some people lift their Jeeps up. I was always to understand that a tow bar should be level. Yep, our ultimate goal whenever you connect your tow bar to your motorhome is, is you want to have that tow bar as level as possible within three inches with our company. Okay, so and that, that has to do with how you would connect Correct. it. Correct. So if you're if you had a raised Jeep, what you're gonna have what you'd have to do if your tow bar wasn't level to get it level is to use a riser drop receiver which slides into the back of the motorhome and you'll see it just has an offset receiver so it'd raise it up anywhere from two inches all the way up to ten I, or drop it. I tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a part two in this because you have a new tow bar with you. Yes, sir. And we're going to show how you connect that and what the differences are. So stay tuned. We're going to have that in just a moment. But first, any other final words of wisdom? Your, your information has been very helpful. Well, I learned a lot here today. Now, lastly, what we did, the, the thing that we have not done was at least lock in one of the arms on our tow oh, okay. bar. So what I would recommend at this point is, is you're going to get your vehicle set up to tow. Now on vehicles that have a four-wheel drive where you can put the transfer case in neutral, um, I suggest just pushing the vehicle back with your leg after you're done hooking it up to at least lock in one leg. Okay, okay. so it, it's funny. I had a conversation with a friend of mine because on the other video that, that I put the link up earlier was Siren. What I would typically do, once we're at this area, I would go in and put the Jeep in tow mode. Up to this point, I would just have the brake on. Then I would just take the bus and very slowly and gently, because you know, it can be a little violent on the car, just pull it forward. Mm -hmm. Now, that did a couple things. Hopefully that would lock these down. At the same time, it gave us an opportunity to put it for my spotter, to put eyeball on the wheels to make sure they were turning, mm -hmm. make sure I didn't forget to do something. Now, my friend told me, no, you're doing it the wrong way. What you should do is before you put you know, the cheap and tow mode is to back it up, to put it in reverse, you know, and to mm -hmm. actually use a motor to it. You're saying while it's while it's in tow mode, just push it. Just lot. push it back. It doesn't take very much effort to do that. And then what you'll notice is, is usually one side will lock, the other side will remain unlocked until this until the vehicle gets centered behind the motor home. And usually within 50 to 100 feet, the vehicle centered behind the motor home, and you'll notice that both that the both arms are equally extended and both arms are locked. So if you're taking off and one of them does the click or locks in place, Correct. one of them, you're good to go. Yes. If both of them are loose, that's not good because well, when you hit your brakes, it's going to come out. After you lock one arm, you just want to first of all go outside. After, you're, after you pull your motor home uh, 50 to 100 feet forward, you always just want to go out and just do a visual check to make sure that both arms are extended uh, equally as high. Okay, now what's the name of that new product? The new one is going to be the Ascent Tow Bar. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to go in and go to part two. I'm going to put a link right up over here. You can click it. We're going to go through the same thing on the Ascent Tow Bar. So if you're shopping, you're going to know what the differences are, and you're going to know how to connect it. So that's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.